So, how exactly does the LG G5 stack up against the LG V10 and the LG G4? Let's find out. I held up the right phones, right? Yeah, I did. Hello guys, where are you? David DeFranco here from DavidDeFranco.com with my LG G5 review. Now, first of all, I just want to give a huge shout out to LG. I have an excellent relationship with them. They've been very generous to me in the past and I could not be more grateful. And while that just continues with this, the LG G5. It's a great phone. I mean, if you don't feel like watching the rest of the video, I'm just gonna say that. It's a great phone, buy it. You will likely not be disappointed. But I do have a lot to say, so let's jump right into it. So let's begin with some specs because some people do care about specs. Me personally, I'm not a spec person nowadays. I mean, they're interesting to look at and interesting to study. But for me, in my opinion, specs do not define an experience. But with that said, let's talk about some specs. So the LG G5 features a Snapdragon 820 processor and always on 5.3 inch quad HD IPS quantum display with a resolution of 2560 by 1440 with 554 pixels per inch. Yeah, that's pretty high res. We also get four gigabytes of RAM as well as a micro SD card for expandable storage of up to two terabytes. And of course included is a battery in the phone, a removable battery that is, thanks to its modular design. It's a 2800 milliamp hour battery. I'll talk about that more in a bit. And finally, it's running Android 6.0 Marshmallow. But David, hold on, you didn't mention the cameras. No, I don't talk for myself, I'm just assuming what you guys are thinking. Yes, I did not mention the cameras because I'm saving that part for right now because in my opinion, the cameras are easily one of the most interesting parts of any phone nowadays. All right, so with that said, there are three cameras on the LG G5, not two, but three. Allow me to explain. First up, we have the standard camera, which is 16 megapixels in resolution, as well as a wide angle lens for eight megapixel pictures and videos. And then finally flipping the phone around, we have a front eight megapixel camera. So yeah, it's pretty safe to say the LG G5, it's decked out pretty well in terms of megapixels. Again, 16, eight, and eight. And one of those eights is wide angle. Think like GoPro quality, but on your phone. And that in itself, I just think is awesome. Okay, so as always, Android lets you take full advantage of these cameras thanks to its manual controls in the software, layout effects, filters, audio triggers, etc. The list goes on and on, especially when compared to iOS. Okay, so yeah, it's pretty safe to assume I'm going to highly recommend the cameras on the LG G5, but only the rear cameras. There's something quite odd about the front facing eight megapixel camera. And this is not only unique to the LG G5. I have actually noticed this consistently across all Android phones that I've dealt with, including the LG G4, LG G5, LG V10, and the Samsung Galaxy Note 5. All four of those phones, for whatever reason, feature front facing cameras that in my opinion are quite lackluster, especially when compared to the iPhone. Okay, so this is not an iOS versus Android debate. I'll talk about that more in the future if you guys are interested. But there you go, I figured it was worth mentioning. I mean, the front facing camera isn't bad. I've seen far worse. It's just, I was hoping for something better. All right, so let's talk about build quality. For anybody who is watching me for at least a year now, you know by now that build quality is extremely important to me. I simply cannot use cheap feeling products. It's just how I am. And thankfully, the LG G5 does not disappoint in this area. Now, I will say it doesn't feel as solid as other phones I've used in the past, but it by no means feels cheap and plasticky. It simply feels lighter, which is obviously a good thing, but it doesn't feel as solid as other phones, such as the Galaxy Note 5. All right, so let's talk about something beautiful here, and this is the IPS display. If there is one category besides the cameras that do not disappoint me with Android phones, it's always been displays. This is one category where Apple really needs to catch up in. Okay, so I will say their displays are beautiful, but they're not as beautiful as Android phones. And the LG G5, it's no different. The 5.3 inch always on quad HD IPS quantum display, it's not only a mouthful, but it's downright breathtaking. The contrast is beautiful. Clarity 
It's like looking through a window. Colors just pop and overall, it's just simply incredible. Easily one of my favorite features about the LG G5, as well as the LG G4 and the LG V10. LG simply excels in this department. So I give you guys props for that. Now in terms of the speaker, this is important to some people because not everybody likes to use headphones and outputting to an external audio signal. So I will say this, the speaker on the G5, it's a little lackluster. I mean, I've heard better on previous phones, but it's not to the point where it's terrible and I don't ever wanna hear a sound ever again because that would be quite dramatic of me to say. But still, I feel it's important to note that the speaker on the G5, it's okay. So let's talk about performance. We could have these fancy cameras, a modular design, a decent build quality, so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, it comes down to how the phone performs, how the software talks to the hardware and vice versa. And well, I'm gonna say this, Android, it's as quick as it's ever going to be, at least in this current state. Because iOS, in my opinion, is still far smoother and easier to use. And believe me, I've used this as an actual phone for about a week and I enjoyed it, but there were many, many features that I missed, such as my Apple Watch compatibility. Now, obviously you can get a variety of Android Wear watches, but I feel it's worth noting that if you do have an Apple Watch, do not expect to use it with an Android phone. There may be some workarounds, but there's no native support as of today. But still, Android, for what it is, I liked it. The customization features I absolutely loved, including the 360 degree wallpaper support. That actually kind of blew my mind. Okay, so it's a little gimmicky and it will drain your battery very quickly. But still, I mean, if you're looking to show off your phone, you can say, hey, look, I have a 360 degree wallpaper and it works as advertised. Okay, so Android Marshmallow, it didn't really disappoint me. I enjoyed my time with it and I will continue to enjoy my time with it over time. That's kind of redundant. And finally, we cannot forget to talk about modular design. Easily the most unique feature about the LG G5 is its modular compatibility with supported accessories. Okay, so this is huge from a marketing standpoint. It allows LG to say, hey, look, you can snap in accessories and boom, completely change the way you use your phone, which I have the utmost respect for. LG is doing something unique. But speaking realistically, I don't see the modular design being a big deal for the end user. I mean, for someone like myself, I'm geeky, I'm obsessed with phones, I'm obsessed with technology, I'm obsessed with IPS displays and rich plaques and all that stuff. But even for someone like myself, modular design, it's not that big of a deal to me because one, the included battery, it was pretty damn good. I mean, the battery life was pretty damn impressive. So I never really saw myself the need to switch it out to another battery. And two, there aren't many accessories that are supported by the LG G5 as of this video. Now, of course, that could change in a matter of months, but as of today, I don't see modular design being a huge deal for most users out there. Okay, so yes, they have the Cam Plus modular accessory, which gives you an actual shutter button for your photos, and that's pretty cool. I haven't used it myself, but I'm gonna assume it works as advertised. But beyond that, I don't see the modular design being around for the LG G6. But even with that said, modular design, it doesn't have to be a big deal because the G5 as it is today already supports a ton of cool features and accessories, such as the 360 VR, 360 cam, and tone platinum. So there you go. If you're not obsessed with modular, that's perfectly fine because you still have plenty of accessories to keep you occupied. So finally, wrapping up this video, the LG G5 is available in silver, titan, gold, and pink. If you guys do want to buy it, check out that link right below. Overall, I gotta say, it's a solid phone. I didn't absolutely love it because it's more of the same of what I've already experienced on the G4 and the V10. I mean, it's better in some ways, but hey, I've been wrong in the past, so there's no reason why I can't be wrong now. Overall, the G5, extremely solid phone. Buy it, you will likely not be disappointed. Once again, huge thanks to LG for making this possible. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now, of course, there's so much more to say about this phone. So if you have any questions, just post them right below. I look forward to answering them. Thanks again, and I will see you in my next video. Peace.